Tell us about how this one's going to be different from the other ones in the market. Yeah, that's exactly right. So this is Apple's next big thing. They've been working on it for north of seven years at this point. They have well over 1,500 uh, engineers on the project. They're getting ready to unveil it in the next couple months and put it on sale later this year. Uh, the factories are going to start churning them out starting at the end of next month in China. But the eye and hand control, right? Some devices on the market right now already can read your eyes and have hand control. But with Apple's device, it's the way they work together that makes it so special. If you remember the touch screen on the first iPhone, that was a big differentiator. The crown on the watch. For this, it's eye and hand control. So let me give you an example. The way you control the device is you can just look at something, whether you want to launch an app, uh, whether you want to swipe through a list or toggle a setting, right? You look at it, and then you pinch your thumb and your index finger together when you're looking at it to launch it. Just like on a touch screen, you tap what you want, or on a mouse, you point the cursor toward it, and then you click. This is you look and tap your fingers uh, together. So pretty nifty. I guess the question is, how do we get to a $3,000 price point, right? How does this headset differentiate itself from Meta's Quest? The other real question I have for you is, like, as an iPhone user, I'm thinking about Memoji or Memojis and Animojis, right, where you use the camera to kind of map your face and interact with that technology. Is this the kind of extension of that? Yes, yeah, so in terms of the price point, well, it has 14 cameras, right? You have a bunch of cameras outside. You need cameras that can look forward, you need cameras that can look up, and you need cameras that could look down, right? Down to see what your legs look like and what your body looks like in order to recreate what you look like in virtual reality for that feature you alluded to in FaceTime. There's also cameras and sensors inside the device to be able to read where your eyes are looking at. In addition, there's two 4K displays, right? You know the 4K TV you have maybe in your living room? Well, there's two of them, mini ones, inside of the, uh, the headset to perform virtual reality. The cameras also, in addition to being sensors to see what everything looks like, it's a way to create augmented reality, right? AR usually uses clear lenses, but in this case, it's going to use cameras to create sort of a fake AR, VR, mixed reality, reality effect. It's uh, pretty cool in practice, I'm told. Uh, the other interesting thing, to your point, mm -hmm. is you're going to be able to replicate a lot of the features of an iPad on here, right? So you'll get Safari, Mail, Maps, Calendar, uh, health tracking even. Uh, there's also a feature where you can hook it up to your Mac and you sort of can control your Mac and then you can see what your Mac screen looks like in virtual reality while using yeah. your keyboard, mouse and trackpad. Mark, very briefly, how much is this moving the needle for Apple valuation perspective from an analyst perspective? Do people ultimately think this is going to be a game changer for them? So in year one, they want to sell about a million units at $3,000. Right, wow. and I believe that's about $3 billion. So in terms of overall revenue for Apple, it's not gonna move the needle uh, in the short term. But long term, this could be a multi-hundred billion dollar market. And Apple, given the layoffs at Meta and the hardware changes at Google and Amazon right. as well, they seem to have a clear runway for not only VR, but other hardware products in the future.